fire down below is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world the same insultingly stupid shit as always i think you really deserve to suffer it starts off with seagal flying stupidly while we learn he's there to investigate some heavy shit. fish acting weird at that kind of thing what he also has a crazy hunch that this fbi agent shot to death in his car and this agent whose throat was cut might not have died of natural causes you and your goddamn conspiracy theories. Seagal is pretty sure those sus fish are behind it and is gonna dedicate this one to old blue eyes. Let's do this thing right for Frank. So now he's undercover and blending in perfectly with a genius cover story that he's just a normal guy who does normal things like normal people and makes a normal living by fixing people's houses for free. How about if I do some fixing on your house? It won't cost you nothing. Then to really sell just how normal and not creepy he is, he makes sure to tell little kids how pretty they are. That's a pretty name. And after making sure their dad's not around, he's not home. He works in the mines. Hangs out with them in their room. Hi, Walter. That's a pretty name. When the dad gets home early, you work on the outside of the house. He thinks quick. I just came in to cheer him up. Before hauling ass out of there. Now that we've established, Seagal is a real person who understands how real people act. Yes, sir, I was thinking I might like to have all these items here. Because how else would the cashier know why you brought them all these items? All right. He can do what he came here for as soon as he remembers what that is. In the meantime, he sees this old man throwing trash cans away into other trash cans and sweeping up a dirt lot and lets him know he respects his game. I like to perch dinner with fried potatoes. Exactly, and it's that kind of non sequitur bullshit that Seagal's gonna miss when he inevitably kills him. Now, he's checking the pH of this little pond and he definitely knows what this means. But there's no time to explain because he has to chase this little shit for reasons the movie never tells us and nobody's ever cared enough to ask. Hey boy, what are you doing? Being chased by a fucking psycho with the worst cardio ever. Luckily, none of this matters because he runs into these criminal masterminds. Find time to take a walk in our marijuana field. Son of a bitch, would you please stop telling everyone? What are you doing here, pretty boy? Chasing a terrified child, fucking obviously. <laughs> and he's more than just a pretty face, you shallow monster. <laughs> <laughs> then Seagal shows us he's got brains to go with the beauty and gives the gun to the little kid he was just chasing who couldn't look any more like a serial killer outside of growing a stupid ponytail. This vital scene shapes the rest of the movie, and just kidding, none of this or any of them are ever seen or mentioned again. Some bitch broke my jaw. Now, his secret friend tries really hard to move the plot along. And night, I see the lights on that hill sometimes. So Seagal thanks him by being a total dick. Probably the headquarters for the UFOs. Fuck you. That night, he's minding his own business, taking a very normal map nap when he hears someone being happy, <laughs> which is one of his pet peeves, so now they're gonna fucking pay. That's right, you still got it. The next day, Seagal says the craziest shit. Believe it or not, a bunch of people up here in Appalachia who like me. They're gonna go with not and challenge him to just name one. After that hurtful experience, he goes where he goes in every movie. The library. He looks so comfortable and natural, and that's something you just can't fake. Then, holy shit, he comes across all his favorite non-food things. An underage girl, murder, and complete and utter nonsense all in one place. So he finds out what she's up to now and tells her he likes her work and maybe sometime they can go killing together. Well, you know, um, 
That's enough talking. Now go put your fingerprints on the 45 that's under the driver's seat. Thanks a bunch. That night, her brother Ike gets word of this and is fucking pissed. I don't want this guy around here. Yeah, you get a bad thing about him when he looks at me. Yeah, but this one has an IMDB with 59 reasons and counting. It'd kill me if anybody hurts you. If those 59 reasons have taught me anything, it's that he will be doing both of those. Means a lot to me. Speaking of, he checks on his slow bro, and oh my god, however he did this must have been hilarious. He can't believe he missed it. Let me see if I can get you up out of here. Luckily, he's able to Richard gear him to the doctor just in the nick of time. Not a few hours, hell, he wouldn't have made it. Just laying him on an exam table that doesn't even have that stupid parchment paper is some revolutionary medicine, you fucking quack. To let off some steam, Seagal attacks these cops and blows one of their heads off. Nah, he just playing. You guys have a wonderful day. Then, while he's just standing there awkwardly for no apparent reason, she decides this is getting too weird and tries to figure out what the fuck is happening. Why did you feel like you had to lie to me? Oh my god, look who you're talking to. He hasn't told the truth about anything in the last 20 years, and he won't for another 20. I love the fuck out of cookies. Any other stupid questions? I mean, did you really want to come and fix my porch? No, you fucking idiots. Why would anyone want to do that? There's only one thing he wants to do. Kill a bunch of people up and around in here. But we're only 45 minutes in, so he also needs to kill some time, which he does by drawing dirty pictures like a caveman and searching for buried treasure. She tries telling him that's not a treasure map, it's a map of California, and they're in Kentucky, but he's not falling for that one again. After some slick driving... Fucking got him! He starts granny shifting, not double clutching like he should. When oh shit, his spark plug starts spitting, which causes him to go full tootses and fall 500 feet to his death. The next morning, he does the very normal thing of just walking into a church and giving a speech while they're in the middle of a hymn. You all are ignorant, barefoot, Poor dumb hillbillies. You all are insignificant. You mean nothing. He ends it by staring down the camera like the true professional he is. The Reverend is so inspired that he has to come clean. I realize church can't help nobody after they're all dead. I thought that was the whole point. I'll testify against every last one of them. Oh my God, that's right. He was having such a blast terrorizing the town. <gasps> He forgot all about those suspicious fish bitches. But first, there's a celebration with a special guest star, the country music legend. That's right, Steven Seagal. Afterwards, this guy tells Seagal how great it was. Nobody lies in Seagal movies other than Seagal and whatever poor young girl is supposed to fall in love with him. Anyways, while Seagal was forcing people to listen to shitty music, when the, girls start to strut, you could look at their butt. the fish were busy protecting their criminal empire. Always the optimist, Seagal is confident the Reverend is gonna make it out. Now that the plot is sorta kinda almost going somewhere, the movie throws an incest subplot at us. You whore. <laughs> to make extra sure it doesn't become watchable. Don't worry, it never could. Now they're zooming around on a sweet mining vehicle. When Seagal needs a break from the high intensity sitting so he can do some no intensity sitting. But unfortunately for Ike, sitting down is where the magic happens and inspiration just hits. You were molesting her. I think your daddy found out about that and went to throw you a real bad beating one time and you killed him. And then you probably went to your little sister and said, little sister, this gun went off by accident 
and uh, I'm an adult. So if you take the rap from me, you're a minor. I ain't gonna do nothing to you. Which is absolutely brilliant, except he wasn't shot. He died in a fire at work. She never took the fall for it. And whatever the fuck past lives began to fight for Congress for it's an extra filler type is supposed to mean. But fuck it, that's more coherent than most of his movies, so they just roll with it. In a tragic twist, after learning that they have so much in common, You were molesting her, and you killed him. They're total bros now. Jack, I like you. That's why I'm not gonna kill you. When he makes a classic mistake and says he doesn't know. With some agency, I don't know, what is that to... So he gets fucking slimed. <laughs> now, things have escalated into the stupidest shootout of all time. <laughs> where instead of just moving away from the slime, they flop around like fish. While Seagal shoots out the lights above his enemies to make them harder to see. But the icing on the cake, what? Calm down, it's an expression, is when he shoots out the light that's not even on. Then they blow up the mine while he's in it. The next morning, he brings her some good news. The number of abusive men in her life has been cut in half. So what that means is it's gonna get a little hot around here. She has no idea what that means, but anyways, they stop at a gas station where they meet these gentlemen who share his love of gun safety. He's so happy to have found someone else who likes pointing guns at people and cocking the hammer just for funsies that he drops his guard and son of a bitch, this whole thing was a rescue mission. Go, go, go. But they must have missed the memo that Seagal is one of the top 20 drivers in the entire movie. But lucky for him, Neil McDonough is number 21 and he nails the gas pumps for no real reason. Speaking of no reason, they just bail out of their car that has zero damage, but then again, it is a dodge, so I don't blame them. Eventually, Seagal gets out of his car and points his gun at nobody in particular. Get away from my window, boy! Then, after sending in Hugo Chavez as a distraction, he flinch shoots more lights before popping off some rounds at these terrified customers. Then lets everyone know he's just getting started. Stick around, we're gonna have some fun. But then notices we're almost at 90 minutes, so fuck that, we gotta wrap this shit up quick. So he drops her off and tells her it's not him, it's her. I'm an adult. That's what he just said. Then he calls his boss and asks if he can remember what he's supposed to be doing, but he's clueless too. So they say fuck it and call the FBI, who end up solving that shit in just under 15 minutes. Then he gets the thrill of a lifetime when they say he can ride along while they make the arrest and even play with the siren. You're a piece of shit. Okay, anyways, they go to make the arrest and Seagal lets them know they're doing it all wrong. <laughs> then after the greatest shit talk you'll ever hear. I'm still alive, asshole. Now that could be because I'm a bad shot. Thanks guys, but we have eyes too. Then Seagal either forgets or doesn't give a shit that the FBI are dead. <laughs> So there's nobody to arrest him, and he just fucking leaves. Anyway. So it's just like every other Seagal movie, where lots of people die, nothing gets resolved, and too many dicks get punched. See you around, buddy. Fuck you, Jack. <laughs>